Hey folks, this is Jake Davis with my picks for the top five best directors of the feature length theatrical release motion picture of 2022. Uh, it's my third of six of these videos. I've done these five years. So let's just get to it. Number five. I'm saying Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Innishman. This is the fourth of McDonough's films I've seen. And with each movie, he brings a different layer of intrigue to this, this concept he has. It's very universal, but at the same time, very much a, uh, you know, Northern European uh, Irish voice, you know, you know, you can see influences of, um, the Coen brothers, Tarantino, and, uh, other, other filmmakers in his work, but this movie really kind of feels like he's finally established this, this uniqueness, something that is truly his, uniquely him, and it's just this brilliant, simple film, a movie that lacks any any shred of pretentiousness or wokeness is just simply unabashedly good. It's just a good fucking movie. A uh, powerful motion picture. And heavily recommended. Number four. I'm doing a bit of a cheat here. Uh, I'm going with Ty West with both Pearl and X. He directed two motion pictures this year that were both unique, inspired, and these love letters to old-time horror films of uh, different uh, eras and generations. First off, you have Etz, which was this exploitation-style film uh, about people tr trying to shoot a horror movie on... Uh, trying to shoot a porno on a... Um, uh, on this old farm, not realizing that the old couple there are these serial killers. <laughs> and it was very much a throwback to the grim, not only just, you know, the really brilliant motion pictures like Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw, but a lot of the Grindhouse uh, movies at the time. Uh, but at the same time, then he had... The flip side of that, the follow up to that, which was Pearl, which was this old school celebration and uh, reminded me of Hitchcock and Fritz Lang and the kind of wild things that they would do with the camera and with the score and the sound effects. It was, uh, it was a celebration of the history of horror films while at the same time being an absolute experiment of what you could get away with just a studio that had faith in you, just letting you go out there, spend their money, and making something good. And uh, damn, man, Ty West after this, I've, been, I've heard about him for years. Never really seen anything he's made. Uh, and with this, it's like, I kind of feel like I need to, I need to go back. I need to do some homework. I need to track down some of this man's work. Uh, because... This 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 may be a genius we're dealing with. Number three, Robert Eggers for The Northman. Oh, hell yeah. Now, like I said in my previous video, uh, when I talked about supporting actresses, that... <laughs> um, this is a, a filmmaker that seems to be focused and obsessed with authenticity, especially in uh, dialogue. And there's just, it's just a, a relentless and unflinching motion picture. It's very, very violent. I also said in my last video that how much I've really always wanted to see this kind of film about Vikings. And it's, 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 it's stark, it's striking, and it's just, you can, it's a movie you really can't look away from. Once, once it starts, it's, it has you. And it will not let you go until it's it's told its story. And I, it's a powerful film. It's a great movie. Number two. It's gonna be a rough year for this kind of stuff. 
Number, because I keep really struggling between my top twos. Number two, I'm going to say Daniels. For everything, everywhere, all at once. Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner, uh, who had previously directed, in my opinion, the silly um, and pretentious Swiss Army Man, really show a hopefulness and brilliance uh, in this film. They, they prove what everything that Hollywood, through all their wokeness, have been trying to achieve is actually here. Here it is. Here's a way that you can actually show a way that you can tell these universal stories that identify with everyone, but star a minority cast and are genuinely hopeful and touching and human. It can be done. We can save movies. <laughs> and that's what this movie is. This movie is hope incarnate. Just see this goddamn film if you haven't seen it yet. And number one, my winner for the best director of 2022 is Matt Reeves for The Batman. He is the most experienced and most mature filmmaker to ever tackle the character before. Ever. I think his take on Batman and this approach and this leaning on old film noir as well as gritty 70s crime film, crime films, and also kind of taking his own approach to so many of the characters. To Selena Kyle, to the Penguin, to the Riddler, to Bruce Wayne. Uh, no, it's not page to screen faithful. But with so many adaptations of Batman at this point, I don't want to see that. I want to see something fresh, something I'm not expecting. And... This was exactly that. It was daring and bold, and even criticisms I, I had looking at, cost, at art directions and costume designs going to the, the film were completely moot by the time I got got walked out of the, the, the film because I, I don't think anyone has ever really quite brought what Batman represents and should be to the big screen quite well. As faithful as he he has, and Zack Snyder's movie was wild, and Christopher Nolan's movie was ambitious, and Tim Burton's was legendary. But with Matt Reeves' uh, vision of Batman, we get something uh, approach to Batman that is we actually see this this kind of structural build, this uh, learn learn through failure situation where to be fair you can always argue that Batman's kind of one of the original Mary Suits. I mean any gadget he may need for any random situation he just has. Anything he may have to invent to a fight uh, uh, invent to invent to fight the next bad guy, sorry stutter. Uh who just automatically knows and has the equipment to do it. Uh it's it's it, it's a flaw to Batman. In this, we actually see him has to just figure shit out on the fly. The scene where he has to escape the police station is genuinely one of the best scenes in Batman movies fucking ever. It's it's a masterpiece. It's perfect. And even with its three-hour runtime, this is a movie I've watched at least 20 fucking times this year. And I've never ever at any moment been bored while it was on my TV screen. I love this film. It is a great movie. It's one of my favorite superhero movies of all time, if not my favorite superhero movie of all time. It is easily, in my opinion, the best Batman movie ever made. That's why Matt Reeves wins. Uh, honorable mentions. I thought Matt Bettinelli opened... And Tyler Jeanette did a great job with Scream 5. I really love their film, uh, uh, Ready or Not, a few years ago. And their segment for the original VHS was terrific. Kenneth Branagh's uh, sequel to Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, was really, really fun, even though it was a bit silly. He did a good job with that movie, with both of the films. Jeff Fowler continued his just 
Good Grace Tour with Sonic, Sonic 2, Sonic Hedgehog 2. <laughs> Sam Raimi tried uh, with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, but... I mean, he should he should be credited for what he brought to the movie, but I mean the the nothing nothing was working as hard as he was on that movie. Uh, Tom Gormican really had this brilliant vision for the Nicolas Cage film, the unbearable uh, weight of massive talent. I thought both DJ Caruso and Olivia Newman with redeeming love and uh, where the where the crawl dad sing did very, very good work with, which was basically the lifetime movie chick flicks. Scott Derrick, Scott Derrickson's the black phone was really a fun, if not silly kind of horror movie. Uh, Zach Kreger's barbarian was brilliant and stunning and shocking and fucking awesome. Uh, Mark Millard's the menu was genuinely inspired and hysterical and, I could watch that movie on a loop. And as much as I hate to say it, because he's basically the whole reason we have the concept of a toxic fandom now, uh, Ryan Johnson's uh, Glass Onion was completely unpretentious and excellent. I loved it. Uh, anyhow, that's three videos down. I hope you all enjoyed this, this round. Um, I'm Jake Davis. I'll catch you on the fly.